Hey everybody, welcome to, welcome back to Over Speed Shop. We've got, of course, we got Dick down here. So we're gonna get into my voided warranty video, the full length video that it's takes- one of these that's only eight and a half inches uh, wide enough for a tire, into this, which I gotta zoom out on, which is now almost 14 inches worth of tire. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's get into the first step of uh, modifying these, and that's the teardown. So these are three quarter inch nuts to remove the wheels. If you look right there, you can see it's got a square notch on it, so it goes up in the square hole right here, so it doesn't spin when you're actually taking it off. Kind of nice. Set those aside, because you're gonna need those for a while. Next thing we're gonna need is a screwdriver. Good old Phillips head, and the reason being because underneath here, let me bring you in. There's these retaining screws right there, and all that does is hold those little retainers in there that hold the the wheels on with these plastic pieces. So let's get those out. All this screw is doing is putting pressure on the wood of the uh, metal leg and holds it in place. Just by friction, basically. I'll show you a little bit more in depth when I get them out. So all they are is a, just a, almost a wood screw. To make it a little bit easier to get them out, I'm just gonna use a pair of needle nose. Grab a hold of it, pull it out. You see how it comes up and around. And these are greasy, so they do put grease on it from the fact that I didn't put that in there. That's what retains it in there. And if you look, all that does is screws into there and puts pressure between the, the metal foot and this plastic. So there isn't much to it. Set these aside. We have to grind those edges down. See, well, we might not have to this time. So I did a set of these for a short, and I've kind of figured out the technique from that. So it's a little bit different from what I did on that one. And you can't really see the details on that video because it's all at high speed. But I'll, I'll show you definitely more detail on these ones. Doing it. So now that those little retainers are out, these just come slide right off. Or so I thought. There we go. I'm gonna find a lip. I'm not really sure how these retain in there from sliding back and forth, but they do. So we're not gonna use these again because they're too short now, but uh, we are gonna use a part of it, and I'll get into what I'm talking about with that. All right, so that's it for the teardown. Next part's gonna be actually cutting these legs. And that's one of the things I gotta to do to modify from my first design to this design. Because I discovered by having it, because I just cut it short here to try to keep this as sturdy as possible in the middle, but it doesn't make a difference. It, it gets just as strong and I'll show you why when I get to that point. So I wanna cut a little bit further in. So I got more room up here for these stop, uh, these retainers here to actually hold into place. And before, I cut it too short and it was interfering. The way I'm gonna do it to maintain these in here, and I, we'll get to that when we get to that part, is the, the extension I make actually was interfering with it being able to rotate. So, but like I said, we'll get more into detail on that. So the next thing we gotta do is basically cut this in half. I'm just gonna go kind of more towards the middle for this one. Now, so I'm just gonna take a quick measurement just to see how far it is from this stop to this, uh, to where this bends up. And then we go basically right in the middle of that. Seven and a half. So half of seven and a half is what? I don't know. Three and a quarter, three and three quarter. So go three and three quarter from there. And make a mark. And that should center it pretty nicely. So the piece we're gonna be putting on here Gonna look like this as part of it. I'm also doing a piece of a uh, quarter inch bar to fill the gap between it because this is a uh, three quarter inch in here and this is half inch. So I'm gonna fill that with a piece of quarter inch flat. And when we get to that, I'll show you that. But we're gonna do eight inches. That way we have two inches on each side and we're adding six inches to the total length of this, which brings our total out to closer to 14 inches. So that's what I did on the first one. We're gonna do it on this one too. That way it brings this centerpiece into the middle here, where it's not gonna interfere with my spinning wheels on the end like I talked about earlier. 
I'll explain that once we get to that part of the room. All right, so all that's left to do is cut those off, and then we'll clean them up to get ready to weld them. All right, so we got those all cleaned up, ready to weld, and we could weld it right back together if we wanted to, but we're gonna add six inches so we can fit a nice wide 335 tire on there. And what we're gonna use is this one by two, 120 wall tubing, along with this quarter inch by four inch plate that we're gonna cut in half, basically to one inch 700 uh, for each one. That'll fill the gap between the half inch of that piece and the about three quarter inch of the inside diameter of that. So that's what we're gonna do. Now let's get to it. Now we got our pieces cut for the extension. So these will go on here to extend it out. This piece will go in between. Yes, there's a pretty good gap there. I just bring it to the middle and it seems to work out pretty good just to keep it all one to one to side. To, to one side, I can't talk today. So it's gonna be like that. You know, obviously straight and welded together. And I gotta cut this plate in half still. I'm not gonna show that, but I'm gonna do that next and get these ready to go together. And we'll get to welding those. All right, so there's one more thing we could do. I'm going to do to these bars that we're putting in there for the extensions. And I'm going to drill a hole in the end of it right here. It's going to end up being a plug weld, but it's also to help clamp the three pieces together. Because I need to clamp to the, the original piece, but through this to bring it up to one. Out. It'll be easier when I show you. We're going to just drill these holes real quick. And... Uh, doesn't really matter where they're at as long as they're towards the end a little bit. Within the one inch, they'll be in the gap. So, we'll drill those out real quick. There you have it. And I'll show you why I did that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is mark one inch inside on this. And I don't know where to put my mark. And the reason why we're doing that, because like I said, we made an eight inch piece and we're extending this by six inches. So we're going from eight inches to 14 inches or about 14 inches. So that gives me a one inch on each side to make that, that six inch gap. Does that mark out to be exact? No, it doesn't. You can make it exact if you want to, but it does not have to be perfect. So now we got these two pieces here that I got to go on together. That one fits inside there and goes over top here. Now I got a line to line it up with. And I try to push it this way because you can see how this is, let me see what is the measurement on that. So that's an inch and a half. And this is, you know, an inch and three quarter on the inside. So there's a little bit of a gap, but I just take up that gap by pushing it flat to the inside of the tool. And what that hole's for, like I talked about earlier, is we gotta get these holes, line, these pieces lined up, line up with the hole, push to the center. Now I can go in here, because that hole is touching this piece, it's gonna bring this piece all the way up and flatten it out. So you'll see it, let me see if I can get you down closer to where you can actually see it lift up and go into place. Put you right there so you can watch it lift up as I clamp it down. See how it leveled out? I'll just try that again so you can actually see it this time, actually lift up, get my hand out of the way. You ready to watch it? Mm, boom, see how it leveled up? So now it's perfect position for welding. So now we can go ahead and go in there and we can weld this in. 
Do the same thing for each side and that part will be done. So I'll show you a little tech tip real quick. Hopefully you can see it. If you look down inside this metal, you can see this little, where they welded it together at the factory. You see there's always a little bump there from what being welded. That's why I chose the other side. That's why I chose to drill this side out because I wanted this side to be the flat side that I clamp up to the piece right here. So just real quick, you know, just be, just be aware of that piece in the middle or the inside so you know it's there. There's always a little lip or a little uh, nub there from them welding it together. At the All right, let's get this thing welded together. All right, so I got those all uh, at least tack welded, not tack welded, but they're welded on. As you can see, I'm only gonna show you that one because that's the one that came out the best. <laughs> so, but the rest of them are welded. I just gotta finish welding all, all the way around it and that part will be done. All right, so we got it all welded up now. <clears throat> now it's gonna take these pieces here and put them onto here to make rollers out of them. And we'll show you exactly how we're gonna do that. But, oh, real quick, that's still hot. kind of want to show you what I'm talking about how those screws just wedge in there so it's just wedged between the metal and the plastic on those stops eh, seems to hold so I'm just using a bigger screw for the new part when I do the roller for that and I'll show you that when we do it all right so we got the two pieces that are gonna be our new rollers cut out and I cut them to 13 and 13 16 I think it's just because I was going for 13 and 3 quarter but Got a little extra sixteenth of an inch out of it. So those are what they're gonna look like. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make them fit and stay on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you real quick how you see how loose they are right now. It's because these are smaller. The original ones are a lot smaller. But this outside diameter of the original plastic ones is the same as the inside diameter, well just slightly smaller, than the inside diameter of the piping I'm using. So what we're gonna do is make uh, ends about an inch long, and we're gonna put those ends on the ends and screw them in. We're also gonna use the screws at our stops to prevent the thing from rolling forward or rolling this way or rolling that way. So that's what we're gonna do. You can see how it fits in there pretty nicely. And I'm just gonna use two uh, self-tapping screws to hold it in there. They're gonna go in through far enough to where they butt up against this to make a stop too. And you'll see that when I get that these cut out. We're going to need two per tube, so one on each end. One here, one here, on each end of the tube. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut these pieces. I'm just using the bandsaw, and I'm not measuring. I'm just going to, like, visually look for about an inch. Because they don't have to be exact. It just uh, needs to be cut. just needs to be there. <laughs> so about an inch is what I'm shooting for. So that's about it. So I just need three more. And there we go. Four pieces, close enough to one inch. So I'm just gonna use this deburring tool to clean up the inside and kind of shave around the outside to get those burrs, so kind of melt the plastic off of there. Okay, so I got those all cleaned up. And they're just gonna fit right in there like that. And then they go around that, the original pieces like they did from that you did originally. So, and I'm gonna pre-set them outside so that way I can just stick it on there and I have a hole to screw it into and then I can do the second one on the other side. I'm just gonna throw these self-tappers in about maybe midway up the, the, the collar here. It's been a few minutes and that's still hot, the weld. But now I got the hole set, so I can take this off, put this on. But now I got a hole for it, so I'll get it up on there and just line up the hole. 
Okay, so I got the first one on there. You see how it goes and it stops against that. Can you see that? She moved over here. So you can see. See, now that screw's in there, it's going to hit this and stop. And it can't go any further that way. So I'm just going to flip it over, put one more screw in, in about that same location, so about maybe three quarters of the way in. All right, so now we got two stoppers on there. The next, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to put this ring in here. And basically do the same thing. Don't worry, I'm going to move my fingers out of the way. All right, so we got the two spacers in there now. Now we need is one of the uh, retainers. Now you see the little groove on the retainer, and you want the screw hole, which is on the bottom here, to go on the bottom to where it can be screwed into on that side. This goes in. I think it's wedged in there by the screw. So I'm going to use the needle nose, pli needle, uh, needle nose pliers to hold it in place so it doesn't slide around and move. And I'll put a bigger screw in so it holds better. All that does is wedge it in there. And now you got a roller that can't fall out. And I just got to do the same thing on this side. All right, so I got the other side on. Now I'm going to put the wheels back on. And this little project on this one is done. All right, so the widest tires I have are on my truck. So let's go ahead and test it out on that and see how it works. Let's get her in there, flip the lever, and start pumping. Try to keep it straight. Looks like something popped out though. So maybe the plastic ain't quite enough to hold it up. But it worked and I can roll it down around like that. So let's drop it back down, see what broke. So what popped off there? Looks like that just popped. Oh yeah, that moved right there. So the original one that I didn't even touch this is when it came off, so I'm going to have to space that out somehow. But overall, it works, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I got that little retainer to pop back in. It just needs to be tightened down somehow. But look how nice it is roll. So basically got a nice working uh, wide wheel dolly now. And that'll, you know, what is that? Where's my tape measure? I don't know where my tape measure went. Clear over there. So now, instead of an eight and a half inch wheel, you can fit probably, you know, even up to that edge right there. You know, some up to about 14 inches. So it'll easily fit a 335, 315, which will probably be on the Firebird eventually. So that's all good. I'm very happy. Just gotta do some adjustments, but overall it works the way it was designed. I'm gonna do this video on, you know, basically voiding my warranty on my wheel, my wheel dollies from Harbor Freight. I do think they might have discontinued these ones. I bought these on clearance anyways. They were like $50 off each when I bought them, which was a really good deal, which is why I bought them. I figured I'd, you know, modify them to make them work for what I need. Uh, the Daytona ones there, I think they're, they go up to 11 inches. So these are eight and a half, so I think they were 11 inches. So these are even wider than that now. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like down there. Leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do, what I can do better. And subscribe. subscribe. I want to thank everybody for being here this long. And I appreciate you watching. So until next time, I will see you all later.